Um, welcome to Complex, Com Complex City, the 2014 SCARP Symposium, and we're really grateful to have you guys all here. My name is Ryan James, and I will be emceeing for you guys today, along with... Hello, my name is Malcolm McLean. I am co emceeing with Ryan. One housekeeping announcement. While we are not going to ask you to turn your cell phones off, we'll ask you to turn the ring ringers off. And the reason we're not asking you to turn your cell phones off is because we're encouraging you to Twitter or tweet throughout the event. And just for anyone who doesn't know, you can find on the front of the pamphlet your hashtag here. It's hashtag CMPLXCTY. Thank you. So it is my honor to introduce to you um, Deborah Sparrow. She is born and raised in the Musqueam community and is an excellent member of their community. I've had an opportunity to work with Deborah in many different capacities. She's a self-taught Salish artist. She's a weaver. She's a jewelry maker. And she's an absolutely amazing grandmother. I spend a lot of time with her son. <laughs> Um, and I would just like to give her an opportunity to introduce us to the traditional unceded territory of the Musqueam people and do a welcome. Thank you, Rianne. Um, thank you, thank you for uh, those nice words. And uh, I always tell my grandson, when we're out in public, it's Auntie Debbie. You know, because uh, in my community, um, our elders are elders. They're not 55 and 60. They earn their wings when they're maybe about 75. So for all of you out there that think you're elders because you're 60 or not, we live in a time when we're youthful. The elders are not like they were when I was a child growing up in my community here in Musqueam. Speaking of which, uh, to do this properly and to make sure that protocol's in place, I'd like to, on behalf of my chief, and my council members, my elders, my community, and especially on behalf of my ancestors for who I'm here, I would like to welcome you to our traditional territory. Uh, you have a lot of work to do in the future and interests in the past that have come together for the reason that you're here. Interesting reasons, valid and important reasons. And I spoke with Rihanna yesterday and I said, wow, interesting that Sometimes we go along in our little communities, not really paying too much attention to what's going on in the city. And, uh, you know, we don't think of ourselves as urban. We think of ourselves as our own unique entity, as a community, as a village, who has been here for thousands of years. We knew what the water was going to do. We knew what the weather was going to do and how many salmon we would have for the future. I'm reading a beautiful book called Fort Langley Journals right now, and it's about the uh, beginning of the fort in Langley, where Hudson's Bay first established itself in the 1800s. And even though my elders shared some history with me, of course, they could not s share all of it. And they were taught not to share it, if we all know that by our history books, that assimilation, residential school, and the way in which we were put in a position to think that the only way we were worth anything or that success was, was through assimilation. Well, we've been assimilated so well that we're wondering sometimes where things are going for all of us. Just when we get assimilated, we're back to asking us, what can we do in our communities? How do we save ourselves? How do we plant our gardens or how do we look at how we're going to survive in the future? Well, I hold my hands up to you because you're paying attention. All of you are paying attention or you wouldn't be here. We've always paid attention. We've always been worried and upset about the direction that we're going as human beings. That's what my grandfather said before he died at 100. He said, I'm really feeling really bad for you. And I asked him why, and he said, the way the world is going now, I'm kind of happy I'm not going to be here to watch it go. But on the other hand, I said to him, Grandpa, and he said to me, he said, make sure you share everything that I've taught you with anyone who's interested. And that's the value of elders. That's the value. And sometimes it's not in a school. 
Sometimes it's not in a university or written in a book. And that's something that we have to really pay attention to. Sometimes we want proof. Sometimes in a situation, we have to go to court and prove that we actually were hurt in residential school. We have to go to court and prove that we lived here. I mean, how many times can we go to court and prove that we have lived in this community, in this land that we love so much? So there is a lot of work to do, and I am interested. And I did happen to uh, pay little attention to my Aunt Jerry, who comes out here to the urban garden. And we did make an attempt last year to plant a urban garden, but we need to teach our children how to make use of it. And that's something I think is very important I'd like to be a part of working on, because I think with the way things are going now, we really do have to, not only in the communities in Vancouver, but in my community, pay attention because, you know, people are asking us. And sometimes we don't have the answer anymore. We're at a place in our lives and in our world where we need to come together. As much as sometimes maybe we don't want to, we must in order to do the collective and move forward. But, you know, sometimes in moving forward, we have to remember to take a step back, maybe a hundred years back, and maybe we need to look at what, what, our, what our people were doing, how they survived, how they collected themselves. And while I was reading that book, one of the most beautiful things I read was he was journaling the fellow who, who resided at the fort, and he said, 30 canoes are traveling past from Cowichan, which is over in Duncan, across the water. And he talks about them going past. So if you figure there's 10 or 12 people in each canoe, that's 300 people traveling together in canoes, going to put their winter supply together. So they're gonna stay there all summer and fish and smoke and prepare and put their fish away. Do we do that today? Not really, we go to IGA and buy fish. Or we buy it from a farm. Farm fish, how about that, eh? Maybe we should take some cows and put them out in the water. I wonder if that would work. No, but you know, I mean, that's, that's how we find it very amusing that you would farm fish. And uh, we need to stop that as well. So with that in mind, I would just like to, again, hold my hands up to all of you because when we do that in my community, it means that we're respecting. We're respecting all of you as, as well and we're inclusive. And I think we're pretty open to sharing and caring and holding our hands up to all the work that all of you are doing. And so with that, I'd like to again um, wish you the best for your symposium and good thoughts, love and light to all of you. And as I end, I just wanna say that in my community, our chiefs are very important. They lead us, but in very important times too, sometimes they come down to being back to who they were because I wouldn't have made it this morning because my little guy was very sick. So I phoned my brother next door and said, you have to come over and rescue me because I've got to get there. And my little guy's sick, so my brother came over to babysit for me this morning. And he also happens to be the chief, so we know our chiefs are good people. Thank you. Thanks again, Deborah, for that. That was really great. I think one of the things beyond um, the welcome that you said that I think um, sets us off on a great tone is to say, as you did, that um, we have to pay attention because we don't know the answers anymore. So in this theme of complex city, I think that sets us off on a really great tone and we can keep that in mind. So with that in mind, next up I would like to uh, invite to the stage our director of SCARP, Penny Gerstein, to say a few words. <laughs> okay, so um, thank you. Um, thank you also, De uh, Deborah, for that wonderful welcome. Uh, we are 
We are really um, so pleased and honored to actually have the Musqueam as a partner in, uh, in, at our school and, and in particular in the Indigenous community planning specialization that we are now in the second year of. I think that the Musqueam contribution and our partnership in there has really broadened and, and kind of deepened our understanding of the complex issues that we're dealing with in, in uh, in the region and in the world. Uh, so first of all, I want to really thank um, the organizers of this event. This is the fifth annual uh, symposium and it is really, it's a really highlight of our school. It's, uh, it's become a, an important event where um, sort of the innovative thinking that's going on at our school is also uh, in broadened out to the larger community and the community uh, community and practitioners are, are kind of contributing in co sort of co-learning. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity. Also, I think that the, the, the theme is, is really a, a very important one. And uh, unfortunately, I think that there has been um, as a baby boomer myself, I recognize that maybe we've made a lot of mistakes on the way and uh, we're really looking to the kind of future generation to sort of try to help us along in this, <laughs> in this journey and coexisting in this world. Uh, and the students at SCARP certainly I see as leaders in, in, those, in the kind of uh, major initiatives and major sort of rethinking uh, that, that has to occur. So the, the workshops today are, are really indicative of sort of the newest thinking of what, of what is possible. So I'm just thrilled that everyone uh, can, can come and attend. Um, and I want to, and I'm not sure if uh, the dean is here. Is the dean here? No. Okay, so uh, we thought that the Dean um, of Applied Science was going to be here, but he, has, he actually hasn't arrived yet. So maybe when he arrives, we'll, we'll introduce him. So thank you. <laughs> so um, Malcolm and I are really lucky to get the opportunity to stand up in front of all you guys when we didn't actually do all of the planning for this event. So I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all of the SCARP students who participated in putting together this amazing conference today. And for doing a lot of the thinking around the topic of the complex city. And we're really exciting about, excited about the ideas that will be generated to hear, here today thinking about wicked problems. Um, I'd just like to thank special guests, our keynote speakers, the panelists, and the audience for all that you'll bring to the discussion. It's really exciting. And I woke up this morning being like, yes, this is gonna be awesome. Um, and with that, I'll just pass on to Malcolm to uh, give some special recognition to our sponsors. So our two platinum sponsors, of course, SCARP, who puts this on. So thank you to all of the faculty and staff who uh, make this happen. The next platinum sponsor we have, which is going to be our next speaker, is the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC for short. Um, sure, come on up, actually. 